As we live in a world that's filled with gadgets, virtual reality headsets, um, you've got clinical grade equipment now in our everyday lives, one can't help but marvel at how science continues to shape our future. From fitness trackers monitoring our every heartbeat to smart glasses giving us immersive experiences, technology today is nothing short of astonishing. But what if, what if tech revolution went beyond entertainment and into something far more profound, like giving vision to those who have never seen before? Well, Elon Musk's brain chip startup, Neuralink, is pushing the boundaries of medical technology. Its experimental vision restoring implant, Blind Sight, just received the prestigious breakthrough device designation from the US FDA. This designation could accelerate its approval process. That's for later, but let's talk about what it could actually do for treating blindness. However, while this news is exciting, the device's capability, especially for those blind from birth, may not be as straightforward as Musk has told everybody on social media platform X today. Let's break down Blindsight. Let's take a look at how it works and what are its ambitious goals. Now, Blindsight is Neuralink's attempt to restore some sense of sight, even for those who have lost both eyes and their optic nerve. Musk claimed on X today that this breakthrough could enable such people to see. However, Neuralink hasn't provided a timeline for the human trials or when it would finally turn into a reality. The device works by implanting a microelectrode array directly into the brain's visual cortex, which activates neurons using input from an external camera. In theory, this could provide a form of artificial vision with the blind sight on you. Now, of course, while similar technologies have been tried for decades, Neuralink's approach adds more electrodes to increase the vividness of the visual experience. Yet, how much sight it can actually restore is still up in the air. Joining us on the broadcast, Dr. Anil Dhar, neurosurgeon, Max Healthcare Hospital, and Kanishk Gaur, digital technology expert. We were earlier talking to you, Kanishk. I'm going to give the doctor the first say this time around. Dr. Anil Dhar, you know, what's going on in your mind? We're talking about various medical terminologies, electrodes, optic nerves, and all of that. But are you excited about this? Or do you think there's, there's, there's a fair bit task that's left to do? Uh, good evening, everyone. First, uh, I think before going ahead with this uh, uh, blind sight. So first, uh, let us uh, think a bit about how the visual apparatus in human works. So we have first our eyes, then uh, there are certain portions of the eyes through which our light senses, like uh, the the lens, the light goes through the lens, then it passes through optic nerve, then it reaches the visual cortex, then the image is perceived there. So what this uh, blind sight does is that it bypasses all these uh, apparatus before visual cortex. So you are if. Uh, if a patient has problem in uh, the, his optic nerve, he has in his any problem in his eye, so it will bypass all of this and uh, the image will directly go to the, our visual cortex where it will be perceived as a uh, image. So now coming to your point, is mm -hmm. it real? Really, really a breakthrough? So that is the issue. So what uh, the company has told till now is that the images won't be that uh, good in nature. It will be a low low level of image. So they, they have uh, said that in future, the, the eye might perceive infrared mm -hmm. rays, red rays and other rays, and the vision will be better than our normal eye. But it is in the inception yet. So we need to wait and watch what is going to happen. So when human trials uh, will start, and we need more data on this this thing. Right, absolutely. Data, more clinical trials, essentially a timeline into this would really help us understand whether this is going to be game-changing for the eyesight treatment or not. Kanish Gaur, digital technology expert, joining us on the broadcast. Kanish, let, let bygones be bygones. We talked about explosions earlier, but essentially uh, this particular device uses an external camera to send this input, to send the visual information to the brain, which is where the chip, um, essentially the implant starts working on. But how does this technology compare to already existing technologies in terms of other visual aids that people have? And what are some of the unique advantages to something like a blind sight implant? See, this is a new technology and uh, what it is enabling is better correlation, right? So, so far we have seen that blind sight devices uh, from Neuralink would enable uh, access between both eyes and the optic nerve. So the technology which is being used for accessing the visual cortex is made intact 
uh, so people who were traditionally blind from birth they will get the chance to see for the first time right so this is a new method which is used where particularly where uh, people who have low resolutions like atari graphs uh, but potentially could have better natural vision and enable them to see through uh, infrared ultraviolet and even uh, you know radar wavelengths like you know the geordi la forge uh, so this is this is a new method which uh, elon musk has taken into account so far the earlier methods which were used would not enable this level of uh, sophistication and depth so people who were permanently blind or, or were you know born this way will have greater chances of seeing the world through this neural link technology because it is allowing direct access between the optic nerves uh, you know uh, to connect with the eyes that that's that's one of the key aspects which we are seeing coming to the picture you know kanish i'm looking at more cool devices in our lives i mean we already have the apple vision you have so much of virtual reality from gaming to entertainment i already spoke about those uh, apple earphones that everybody's talking about those clinically grade hearing aids that act as your earphones as well but you know uh, coming back to the doctor with us on board dr anil dhar neurosurgeon at the max healthcare hospital uh, how does the brain's ability and we're constantly asking these questions because when all those uh, you know critics and skeptics of uh, this particular device uh, you know came on board they said uh, it, it it will vary from somebody who's lost their eyesight later on in life compared to somebody who was born uh, you know blind how does that variation you know sort of create the difference dr anil dhar if i could have you on my screen basically till now what they have said is they have they are planning to use in certain set of diseases like uh, the retinitis pigmentosa or some uh, those who have who are blind by birth they have problems in their optic nerve they have not yet talked about other diseases like uh, degenerative disease or some other diseases they are going mm -hmm. to start with only those diseases like the child is uh, blind from the birth so we need to wait we don't have actual information yet about in whom they are going to use till now they have stated that there will be few of the indications for uh, this uh, blind sight implant all right all right kanish i'm sure you've uh, read the tweet that was put out by elon musk uh, do you think that's a that's a far fetched claim by elon musk i mean we know he does exaggerate stuff but then again he does eccentric stuff as well i mean private space walks uh, you know the list is too huge to uh, put forth right now but this particular claim do you think it's far fetched at the moment see uh, he is doing testing so mm. if you look at what neuralink is doing there is testing which is going on and they are actually calling out for people to be uh, available as volunteers and paying them so mm. it's not that that they have been able to solve it entirely like the doctor mentioned uh, they are trying to create a generalized brain wave interface to restore autonomy those who are not able to get sufficient uh you know answers to uh, you know the medical needs today so they are mm. trying to create more solutions so this is a ongoing uh, research so not everyone will you know get the vision through this it is based on use cases where they will call these people and then try and experiment so i don't think so this technology so far is patentable they can still file for uh, patents but i don't think so they will get the patents uh on this they can get us fda permissions to carry out these researches but it for it to come out as a patentable technology or reach that scale it is mm. still uh you know far off kanish i I'll, i'll tell you what um i'll put forth a, a question that a youngster put forth to me today well let's put that picture out i'm going to request the control room to put the picture out that has been put out by uh, you know put out by neuralink where you see the little band in front of the eyes it looks like a cool device that has been put out by neuralink is that what it's going to look like this particular uh, this particular device blind sight is that what it's going to look like see i think this is sheer marketing you know uh Elon Musk apart from the great things which he does he's one of the best marketers in the world uh, he's picked up a, a you know a image from star wars and he's trying to uh, <laughs> market it to us for a solution which is far fetched which requires more testing uh, more patents and more evaluation to be done so let's not be misled by such images and be more practical that this is a ongoing research and more people will come forward as volunteers to see if they could still get back their vision all right all right
Um, Dr. Dhar, coming to you. Let's say this, this really takes off. This entire technology does take off. You have the right kind of data. Uh, there are success stories as well. How might the success of Neuralink's this blind sight vision changing gadget, uh, this vision restoring implant rather, um, my apologies for you know interchanging those words. It's really surreal to say that. I'm, I'm, I mean, you know, there are gonna be brain implants as well. Other fields of technology and medical research, there's gonna be some sort of, you know, um, how do you call it? Windfall effect in those fields as well, now wouldn't it? Yeah, see, if this works, first let me tell you the brain is a very complex thing. So we need to wait what are the results and how a human body will react uh, to the implant because brain is a very complex uh, thing. So we need to wait for the results and what a uh, uh, human eye will uh, look like after we put in the implant. We need to wait. Second is that it will definitely change because there are so many diseases where you can think of putting implant like some patients who are quadriplegic, who have all two arms are not working and both legs are not working. So they have started some work on that as well. So there are many degenerative diseases of the brain where some implant you can put. Some uh, There are some diseases where already some uh, like deep brain stimulation surgery is done for Parkinson's and other diseases. It is So it will add to that. So there, it will hmm. be a path changing. No, you're absolutely right. Uh, you know, Kanishk, um, coming back to implantable technology, I'm sure there are ethics around it as well. Another youngster today asked me, you know, we're talking about the lithium battery is getting hacked, you know, so many devices getting hacked. I mean, if you have a chip in your own system, couldn't you be a modern zombie? I mean, that was just a question coming from, uh, you know, a child is watching too many cartoons. But do throw some light on that as well. You know, ethics vis-a-vis um, -vis implantable technology. Where are we headed? See... As we move forward, ethics will also need to be taught to people who are making such advanced technologies. Because if these people start using these technologies to work against the human race, it could really impact uh, you know, our survival. So ethics must be built in as part of design. We've been talking about security by design, trust by design. I think ethics by design is going to be one of the key elements when we build these technologies. So these technologies can't be uh, used against uh, humans. That's the need of the hour. And you will have to build out regulatory frameworks to ensure that proper testing is done before these are made available at mass level. And if there's any kind of breach, which could be used to sabotage a VIP uh, or even a normal person, there are uh, laws and norms in place to puppet, you know, to punish the perpetrators. No, but um, and at the bottom line, I know um, I, don't, I didn't want this to be a too much of a pedagogical debate to get into the academia of medical terms. Uh, are you, do you feel that this is a really cool thing? This is an advent of a really cool thing. Are you excited? No, I am excited. It is a really cool thing. But for it to be made scalable, they will have to look at case studies. Because every case hmm. where hmm. a person doesn't have eyesight is very different. Uh, what part of the brain has got impacted? How are you going to bring that eyesight back for that person? It's fairly complex, right? So you need more testing to be done. You need more volunteers. Uh, you need more case studies to be built up. It's it's a complex problem. It's not that simple that you put up a chip and you try connecting mm -hmm. and you get uh, you know somebody to see the world. Uh, so uh, more testing, more analysis, more data to back the clinical researches is is the need of the hour. You know, uh, Elon Musk also uh, sort of like an indirect low blow to Atari. He said it's first going to be like an Atari graphics, like the Mario game and the Contra game we used to play back in the day. Uh, but uh, it could go on. I'm trying to understand, is it going to be possible for us to see infrared wavelengths and, you know, various kinds of wavelengths? If, if my phone is connected to a Bluetooth right now, after using the implant, will I be able to visually see the Bluetooth waveline getting connected to my phone? That's exactly what I'm trying to understand. See... See, I see this more as far-fetched and marketing gimmick. This is something... Well, my apologies for that. Money. No, no, no. He, this is far-fetched. Uh, and this is more like a marketing gimmick right now. He's hmm. raised hmm. money. He promises us the landing in the moon and the Mars. So such are the claims for even allowing us to uh, have a viewing of infrared, infrared uh, right? So that's where I leave it. Uh, he's a great master in terms of uh, getting funding, taking far-fetched ideas, hmm, hmm. but it takes time to build such technologies. 
All right then. All right then. Coming back to the serious brass tacks, Dr. Dhar, one final question to you. Uh, the brain's ability to process visual information, but we're also looking at potential risks when you're talking about implanting something into a complex organ like the brain. Throw some light on that. How difficult is that going to be? It's not the first time we've planted something in the brain, but something like a chip, uh, you know, a complete visual restoring chip. How does that sound to you? See, with the modern technology, the surgery won't be that difficult because we have now uh, other technologies like uh, many minimally invasive. We can put it inside the brain. It won't be a bigger surgery. But the problem is that it can the patient can have infection. Uh, he can have seizures. He can have many other disorders with putting in a foreign body inside your brain. So you need to take care of all those things. We need some uh, studies. How will it affect uh, the person's brain? So you are putting in a foreign uh, thing inside a brain. So we need to uh, be cautious 